Hello! This video will present PCFG's probabilistic context free grammars. Grammar theory to model symbol strings originated from work in computational linguistics, aiming to understand the structure of natural languages. Probabilistic context free grammars have been applied in probabilistic modeling of RNA structures almost 40 years after they were introduced in computational linguistics. Designing efficient PCFGs has to weight factors of scalability and generality, and issues such as grammar ambiguity must be resolved. The grammar design affects results accuracy. Probabilistic context free grammars are natural generalization of context free grammars. The key idea in probabilistic context free grammars is to extend the basic definition to give a probability distribution over possible derivations. A crucial question of pausing with PCFGs is the following. Given a sentence, how do we find the highest scoring pause tree for that sentence? To answer that question, we'll introduce the CKY algorithm. It employs bottom-up pausing and dynamic programming. The standard version of CKY operates only on context-free grammars given in Chomsky normal form. However, any context-free grammar may be transformed to a Chomsky normal form grammar expressing the same language. Let's start by recalling some basic definitions. Derivation is the process of recursive generation of strings from a grammar. Parsing is finding a valid derivation using an automation. And parse tree is the alignment of the grammar to a sequence. Probabilistic context-free grammars extend context-free grammars similar to how hidden Markov models extend regular grammars. Each production is assigned a probability. The probability of a derivation is the product of the probabilities of the productions used in that derivation. These probabilities can be viewed as parameters of the model, and for large problems it is convenient to learn these parameters via machine learning. A probabilistic grammar's validity is constrained by context of its training data set. TG is the set of all possible leftmost derivations, pause trees and the grammar G. When the grammar G is clear from context, we'll often write this as simply T. For any derivation T, from the set TG, we write yield of T to denote the string S from the set sigma star, that is the yield of T, that is yield of T is the sequence of words in T. For a given sentence S from the set sigma star, we write TG of S to refer to this set of T's, where each T is from the set TG and the yield of T equals S that is TG of S, is the set of possible pause trees for S. We say that a sentence S is ambiguous if it has more than one pause tree, and we write that the size of TG of S is greater than one. We say that a sentence S is grammatical if it has at least one pause tree, and we write that the size of TG of S is greater than zero. Probabilistic context-free grammar consists of a context-free grammar, G, which contains the following sets. N is the set of non-terminals, sigma is the set of terminals, S contains the special start symbol, R is the set of rules in the grammar. In addition to this context-free grammar, P, C of G contains the parameter Q of alpha goes to beta. For each rule, alpha goes to beta from the set of the rules R. This parameter Q of alpha goes to beta can be interpreted as the conditional probability of choosing rule alpha goes to beta in a leftmost derivation, given that the non-terminal being expanded is alpha. For any x from the set of non-terminals, we have the following constraint. The sum over of all rules alpha goes to beta from the set R, where alpha equals x, the sum of q's where alpha goes to beta equals 1. In addition, we have, as for any probability, that q of alpha goes to beta is greater or equal to 0 for any rule from the set of the rules R. Given a pass tree T from the set of TG, which contains pass trees containing rules, alpha 1 goes to beta 1, alpha 2 goes to beta 2, up to alpha n goes to beta n, the probability of T under 
the PCFG, probability context free grammar, is given as the product of Q terms. That is the product of conditional probabilities of these rules which are contained in this particular treaty. Here is an example of a probabilistic context free grammar. The set N contains the following non terminals S is a special start symbol, NP is a noun phrase. VP verb phrase, PP prepositional phrase, DT determiner, VI intransitive verb, VT transitive verb, NN is a noun, IN proposition. The set S contains the special start symbol. The set sigma contains the terminals. Those are the following words sleeps, saw, man, woman, dog, telescope, the with, in. And finally, we have the set of rules R with associated probabilities Q. So we have these two tables. The left table contains non-terminals at both the left and the right hand side of the rule. And the right table contains a non-terminal on the left and terminal on the right side of the rule. But what is important here is to notice that for any non-terminal, for example, here, verb phrase, the sum of probabilities have to be one. So we can notice for any rule that this um, requirement holds. So for the propositional phrase, we have only one rule, so the probability must be one. For noun phrase, we have two rules, and they also have to sum up to one. Or if we look at the right side table, the same goes for the noun, these four nouns. They probabilities sum up to one, or for these two propositions, the probabilities also have to sum up to one. In order to calculate the probability of a past tree given previously defined probabilistic context free grammar, we have to calculate the product of the following Q terms. So going from the top to bottom, first we need to take this probability of S goes to noun phrase, verb phrase, and to multiply it with the next rule, that is noun phrase goes to determiner and noun, times the probability of this rule, determiner goes to the, times the probability of noun goes to dog, and then times the probability of verb phrase go to intransitive verb, and finally to multiply it with the probability of this rule, that is the intransitive verb goes uh, to sleeps. We can think of a pause tree as the outcome of the generative stochastic process. This process generates strings. The first string that is generated is a special start symbol for the i equals 1. And for the rest of the strings, as i, we repeat the following procedure. And this procedure repeats until as i contains at least one non-terminal. So the procedure goes as follows. Find the leftmost non-terminal in as i and denote it as x. Then choose one of the rules of the form x goes to beta from the distribution q of x goes to beta. Then create s i plus 1 by replacing the leftmost x in s i by beta and then increment s. But the question is, how do we derive a PCFG from a corpus? Each pass tree TI is a sequence of context-free rules. We assume that every pass tree in our corpus has the same symbol S as its root. We can then define a PCFG with the sets N, Sigma, S, R and Q as follows. N is the set of all non-terminals seen in the trees T1 up to Tm. Sigma is the set of all words seen in the trees T1 up to Tm. The start symbol S is taken to be S. The set of rules R is taken to be the set of all rules alpha goes to beta seen in the trees T1 up to Tm. And the maximum likelihood parameter estimates are given as follows. Q ML of a rule alpha goes to beta is the ratio of the counts. Count alpha go, goes to beta is the number of times that the rule alpha goes to beta is seen in the trees T1 up to Tm to the count of alpha, where count of alpha is the number of times the non-terminal alpha is seen in the trees T1 up to Tm. 
a context-free grammar G, which consists of N, set of non-terminals, sigma, set of terminals, R, set of rules, S, a special start symbol, is in Chomsky form. If each rule alpha goes to beta from the set of rules R, takes one of the following forms. X goes to Y1, Y2, where each of these, X, Y1, and Y2, is a non-terminal. Or X goes to Y, where X is non-terminal, while the Y is a terminal. Hence, each rule in the grammar either consists of a non-terminal X, rewriting as exactly two non-terminal symbols, y1, y2, or a non-terminal x, rewriting as exactly one terminal symbol y. A crucial question is the following. Given a sentence s, how do we find the highest scoring positive tree for s? Or more explicitly, how do we find argmax of probability t for t in a set t of s? The answer to this question gives the CKY algorithm a dynamic programming algorithm, which applies to a restricted type of PCFG, which is in Chomsky normal form. While the restriction to grammars in Chomsky normal form might at first seem to be restrictive, it turns out not to be such a strong assumption. It is possible to convert any PCFG into an equivalent grammar in Chomsky normal form. So the input to the algorithm is a PCFG as defined with the sets N, Sigma, S, R, and Q in Chomsky normal form, and a sentence X1 up to Xn, where Xi is the ith word in the sentence, and the output of the algorithm is argmax of the probability of T, where T is from the set Tg of S. The CKY algorithm is a dynamic programming algorithm, and key definitions in the algorithm are given as follows. For a given sentence x1 up to xn, we define t of ij and x for any x non-terminal, and for any pair ij, such that i is less or equal to j, and they are positioned in the range from 1 up to n, to be the set of all pass trees for words xi up to xj, such that non-terminal x is at the root of this tree. We define pi of ij and x to be the maximum probability p of t, such that t is element in t of ij and x. We also define pi of ij and x to equal to zero, if t of ij and x is the empty set. Thus, p of ij and x is the highest score for any pass tree that dominates words xi up to xj and has non-terminal x as its root. The score for a tree t is again taken to be the product of scores for the rules that it contains. For example, if the tree T contains rules alpha 1 goes to beta 1, alpha 2 goes to beta 2, and so on up to alpha m goes to beta m, then probability P of T is calculated as the product of Q terms. In particular, we multiply Q of Ri, alpha i goes to beta i, where i goes from 1 to m. Note in particular that pi of 1, n, and s is the argmax of probability t, where t is in set tg of s, because by definition p of 1, n, and s is the score for the highest probability pass tree spanning words x1 up to xn with s as its root. The key observation in the CKY algorithm is that we can use a recursive definition of the pi values, which allows a simple bottom-up dynamic programming algorithm. The algorithm is bottom-up in the sense that it will first fill in pi of ij and x values for the cases where j equals i and then the cases where j equals i plus 1 and so on. So the base case in the recursive definition goes as follows. So for i from 1 up to n, and for all x non-terminals, we calculate pi of i, i, and x as follows. So it equals the q of the rule f x goes to x i, if this rule x goes to x i is a valid rule from our grammar, or it will equal zero otherwise. 
This is a natural definition, the only way that we can have a tree rooted in node x spanning word xi is if the rule x goes to xi is in the grammar, in which case the tree has score q of x goes to xi, otherwise we set pi of iix to 0, reflecting the fact that there are no trees rooted in x spanning word xi. The recursive definition of the algorithm is given as follows. For all i and j, such that i is less than j, while i is greater or equal to 1, and j is less or equal to n, and for all x non-terminals, pi of ij and x is given with the following expression. So we calculate the maximum probability by multiplying these terms. So we have the q, which is the probability of the rule x goes to y and z times the previously calculated pi's. So first pi is the pi of i, s and y, and the second one is pi of s plus 1, j and z, while this s is an element from the set from i up to j minus 1, and this calculation goes for all rules x goes to y and z that are valid rules from the set of the rules r. The inputs to the CKY algorithm are the sentence S, which contains words x1 up to xn, and probabilistic context-free grammar, which contains the following sets, non-terminals, terminals, start symbol, set of the rules r, and q parameters. The algorithm returns pi of 1 n and s, which is the maximum probability of the p of t, where t is a pass tree from the set t of s. It also returns the back pointers bp, which allow recovery of erg max of p of t, which is actually the pass tree with the highest probability. Uh, we define this algorithm based on the recursive definitions, and the algorithm fills in the pi values bottom up. First, the pi of iix values using the base case in the recursion, and then the values p of ijx such that j equals i plus 1, then the values for the pi of i a, ijx such that j equals i plus 1, and so on. Note that the algorithm also store back pointer values bp of ij and x for all values of ijx. These values record the rule x goes to y and z and the split point s leading to the high scoring pass tree. The back pointer values allow recovery of the high scoring pass tree for the sentence. The CKY algorithm goes as follows. So from L from 1 up to n minus 1, and for I from 1 up to n minus L, we set J to equal to I plus L. And by this choice of I and J, we ensure that the algorithm goes from bottom up. Then for all X non-terminals, we calculate pi of I, J and X, as we previously explained, that is to find the maximum probability. We also do some bookkeeping, so we record back pointers as argmax, that is saving the information about the particular pass tree with the highest score. But how do we justify this recursive definition? The key observation is that any tree t rooted in x spanning words x i up to x j must consist of the following. A choice of some rule x goes to y and z from the set of the rules r at the top of the tree, a choice of some value s from the set i up to j minus 1, which refers to the split point of the rule. Then a choice of a tree rooted in y spanning words from xi up to xs, we can call this tree t1, and a choice of tree rooted in z spanning words xs plus 1 up to xj, we can call this tree t2, and then we calculate the probability. The probability for the tree t is the product of three terms. So the rule probability for the rule at the top of the tree, and probabilities for the subtrees t1 and t2. 
Let's move on to a question. So consider the following PCFG, where probabilities for each rule are shown after the rule. So let's first check that this is a valid PCFG. So for example, we have uh, only one rule for the verb phrase. So the probability of this rule equals to one. Then for the noun non-terminal, since we have three possible nouns in our vocabulary, these probabilities also sum up to one. And if we check the rest of the rules, we can conclude that this is a valid PCFG. So the question is, what pass tree will be returned as the highest probability tree for the sentence, the metal car mechanic sleeps? All pass trees for this sentence contain the following rules, as shown here. Because all pass trees contain the same set of rules, the probabilities for the different pass trees are all identical. Here we can observe two different pass trees for the sentence the metal car mechanic sleeps. However, since they have the same probability, we can conclude that both pass trees are good enough and both answer our question.